So December finished fairly warm. Um, January is meant to be. January and February are traditionally a very hot month. We've got some jobs ahead, so I'm hoping it's not going to be just too stinking hot this month or they're not going to get done. But we'll see how it goes, eh? Wish me luck, folks. It's January and I'm going in. G'day, folks. Andy here from McDowell Manor. Possibly one of the dumbest ideas in the history of man. Holy hell, she was right, it was feral. Look at the black on the bottom. Actually, it's... I hate to say it, but I think it's bloody working. But no, fair dinkum, she's sober. Well, I'll be buggered. Summer has come. It's about 26 degrees inside because we're running the air con. It's 35 outside, which is pretty much normal for this time of year. Up until now, we've been spoilt because it's been so cold. Um, and the weather prediction is we're going to get rain this afternoon which is probably likely. So today is the 6th of January. I harvested a whole lot of Tordal. Now most Aussies call that um, pigeon pea. I don't call it pigeon pea. It's a terrible pea. I thought it was disgusting but it's a wonderful lentil so I'll stick with the Indians and continue to call it Tordal. I have a um, recipe I think I did a video on it. I'll have to check that. If I have, I'll put a link in. The reason I harvested the pigeon peas at Tordal was um, I wanted to hedge, cut that, push that bit of a hedge back a bit. It was crowding out the roses. You can see one's getting black spot there. Um, so that was a good excuse, which meant I had to pick the Tordal off the top, I keep going to call it pigeon pea, um, and then trimmed it up with a big electric hedger. Wonderful for mulch, that bloody stuff. Look at it. You can see I use it over and over and over. It does a great job. You do have to be a little careful with that vetiver grass because boy, it's sharp. Look at that right between the fingers. This is the end of the aquaponics bed where it wasn't draining. As you can see, Uncle Marky's come over. He's helped me shove another thing under the bottom corner there, just enough to lift it. And that's pulled the trick, done the Thanks trick. Uncle Marky, good on you, really interesting. This is the aquaponics bed. Um, it's like, honestly, if you remember what we were seeing in uh, winter when I get no sun on this, you'd swear it was a completely different bed. You know, I'm, I've got another five packets of those cherry tomatoes. I'm going to make some a different sort of sauce this time. Um, I've already still got two litres of the last lot that I made. The 19th today, and you can see I really am going to have to get on to doing something with all those tomatoes, can't you? Well, we did a lot better with the quail hatch this time. It was the temperature, because I got nine. I would have got ten, but um, one died in the egg now. Actually getting pretty good at getting them out of the egg. So if I had have found that little bloke, I actually very confident I could have saved him. So these are less than a week old and they're starting to get feathers on the wings. It's amazing. If you can get them through that first little while, gee, they flourish quick. So the quails are doing quite well. The two darker birds in here are the babies from the last litter. And I've got nine more be mad as cut snakes these birds. I've got nine more in the um, brooder. Just about feathered up completely. I'm getting five eggs a day, which is good. Um, what I'll mention, I don't normally put photos up, but I've always found my birds are a little tough. 
I can get great flavour out of them, but they're a little tough. And the reason for that is because I always give them at least, usually 18 months life. Um, they only live for two years, so they're old birds by the time I eat them. Lovely flavour, but terrible tough. Well, I slow cooked that last, that was a rooster. Now, uh, that's actually one of the younger roosters. Um, same time as those other two, I oh, know, a little earlier than the other two um, that I showed you, little brown ones. Um, my birds are always tough, very tasty. Well, I slow cooked it, and I'm going to put some stills up of um, the slow cooked garlic and ginger quail. It's absolutely magnificent. That's the babies in the brooder. You can see, well, hopefully, you can see under that red light. Uh, they're mostly feathered up, so they're not far off going outside. I'll just wait until they get a little bit more on the head. Uh, but given, you know, how warm it is, I'm um, getting tempted to start and move them soon. That'll give them access to a much bigger cage as well, which will make them happy. You can see there's the odd really tiny little bird, like that one in the middle. Otherwise, the rest seem to be pretty well on track for jumbos. And of course, you only breed from your bigger birds. Sometimes nature has a way of taking decisions right out of your hands. I went to the um, brooder and the heat lamp had exploded. And there were shards of glass all through the bottom of the brooder that I had to get out. Luckily, no birds got cut feet. Can't believe it. Um, so I've thrown them all out. They're in the outside cage now. I think they'll be fine. This one little guy here looks a bit traumatised, but apart from that, he'll settle down. They'll work it out. There you go. Didn't quite expect it to work out this way, but there you go. The other thing I've got going on today is I'm trying to trim back some of this stuff. Um, you can see where I've started. I can't reach the high stuff because we've left the middle part of the big trimmer on a saw, on a pole at bloody Uncle Marky's. <laughs> so I'll have to get over there and get the middle pole. See, it does a cracking job, that hedger, can't you? So I got the chainsaw on a stick. You can see that <laughs> it's a fair whack of debris. There's the chair for, give you a gauge of scale. Where I really was concentrating was up near the garage because that was coming way over the garage and I really don't want that. So that's where we really hit and the bit that's a nice thick visual screen, I tried to leave alone a fair bit. Later the salve, I'll get back onto that and I'll mulch all that up. Uh, it's 35 degrees at the moment, so it's a bit hot to be out here doing too much. So we're at it again. I'm um, using that little shredder. And you can see I've just started mulching those cuttings up. Now they'll get used on the garden. That one I reckon is too big. So I've taken off all the small branches and I'll load the big bits into the pizza oven. And when I next want to cook in that oven, I'll be burning the old wood and that ash out of the pizza oven gets put in the compost as well. Brill, hey? Brilliant. But as you can see, that's a pretty big branch. But the beauty is it's relatively straight and thin. So I reckon it'll go through like a ripper. Let's give it a go, shall we? Just clear the bottom a bit. Isn't that amazing? Now, this shredder's not good for a real, as a real shredder. Like, if you're doing big things, it ain't gonna work. But for the majority of stuff that I do, it works a treat. Oh, I didn't get quite finished, but you can see the bulk of the pile's gone. That dead stuff was actually on the other side near the compost bin, so I've actually mulched quite a lot. You can see all around the place, mulched beds. Now, why am I packing up? Thank you. 
it's looking like it's about the storm and I don't want an electric mulcher out in the rain. Completely different change of pace here. Actually got three fermenters running at the moment. So this first one, that's ready to, that's a spirit fermenter that's ready to be flocked. Um, or what that means is you pour some stuff in there that um, settles any sediment to the bottom so that it doesn't come out. The second one is another spirit, it's on. And the third one is beer and it's been flocked and it's ready to be bottled. So if I can get the chance, probably today or tomorrow I'll do that. So this is the clearing or flocking agent that I use for um, the spirit. You can see it's two parts, you put that part in, you wait a while and then you throw that part in. Um, no mixing or anything, you just pour it in. Now the beer I do with um, gelatin, normal old gelatin, I just make a teaspoon of the gelatin powder up into a cup of boiling water and pour that into the beer and it does pretty much the same thing. So that's the still running. That normally would happen probably once a month. Um, but you can see I've actually got a few batches on, so the last one's beer, so that's just got to be bottled. Um, and that one's going to have the finings or flock added today. And away it goes. A relatively straightforward process, really. I use the outflow water to actually clean bottles and the fermenters. Waste not, want not. So that was how much... We got out of the still when I ran it, to about four hours. It um, comes out about 92% from that still, um, which obviously I'm not drinking at 92%. So what I do is I break it down with water um, till it's exactly 40%, which I measure on an alcometer. And for those who are interested in this sort of stuff, I do have a playlist on how to do this properly. And just to give you an idea, that's how much we end up with at uh, 50, what did I say? No, 40%. It's actually technically 39%. Well, that one will be 40, that one will be 40, and that one will be 39. So I added a bit, little bit much water, which I didn't do on the remaining two. But there you go. Five litre bottle, so you're probably looking at a good 12 litre. And the final step is... We run it through a carbon filter um, down into that bottle. When that's filtered, it goes into a bottle like that where I add the essence, bottle of essence, which looks a bit like vanilla essence, and it's rum essence. Um, and it'll make 2.1 litres, which is exactly three of my 700 mil bottles. There you go. Nice. We've just been doing the first step of the beer, where you put a teaspoon, isn't it Hayden, that pink teaspoon of caster sugar in an empty bottle that you know is clean and sterile. So we've, so we've done that for 27 large bottles. May I ask, why is he using his five-year-old grandson to help make, his, make the beer? Because everybody knows, exploitation begins at home, people. My little helper got bored and wandered off <laughs> to watch Play School, as you do when you're five. So we've done the first dozen bottles, I'll get rid of them, and then I've got another 15 in a box to go. Today's the 26th, it's actually a public holiday today. Some folks call it Australia Day, and other folks, our First Nations people, call it Invasion Day. Uh, really is hot now. By this point in the year, it's stinking hot. That little weather gauge up there is telling me that it's 38 degrees at the moment, which is pretty warm. Up past five-ish, um, still on the 26th. It's actually cooled down to 30 degrees, so I went out and I did muck out the cages. I focused on indoor chores in the aircon, so cleaning out fermenters and stuff like that. That's the beer fermenter. They are in their nice fresh abode. You can see that one panting. Much happier little birds. You're going to have to have a beak to trim, mate. These ones are the same. They bloody hate me getting in there and pulling everything out and upsetting them, but 
it is what it is guys if you want nice floor you've got to get a little put up with a little bit of cleaning even the little e's are happy look at them aren't they cute still haven't quite managed to completely feather up on the head but they're getting pretty close now and you see how sweaty i am now that's after 10 minutes back inside i was going to go out and mow but it I knocked myself up too much doing the bloody quail bottle. It's a 700 mil bottle. I've had four of those today. And I'm about to crack a nice cold beer. I'll have two of them. Then I'm going to go and have a shower. It really is one of the things I hate about summer. Because it's so hot and it's bloody wet. The grass just grows like crazy. I mowed this fair income. It wouldn't have been a whole week ago. Look at it. Bloody Nora. The regular viewers will know that here in Queensland, unless you net things, you're mad if you try to grow anything aside from cherry tomatoes. But what I've done, and this is the first time I've done it, is in each corner, I've put a black Russian. I've heard a lot of people talk, oh, now that is starting to flower. Beauty. Um, I've heard a lot of people talking about them, so it's in all four corners. Uh, as you know, I've got the hoop house frame there. And what I was about to say, and it looks like I've been beaten to the punch. This one suffered a bit. Not sure what happened there. Those cherries are on another tomato, as you can see. Anyway, um, and there's one on the opposite corner somewhere over there. Um... So now that that one started flowering, well, it's about to, in the next couple of days, so early February, we'll put that netting up over the frame. And we'll see how that goes. Well, the other thing we've managed is um, this, I've been threatening for years to set up like a hoop house that's covered in a really fine mesh to keep the, mosquito, the um, fruit fly out of. Well, it's turned up. Uh, haven't opened it obviously yet and it came with some stake downs if I want to use them now let me show you what I'm going to do with them well that'll give you the rough idea I need to play with it a lot more I just wanted to throw it up there so I could show you what it's going to roughly look like and that's what it's roughly going to look like I wanted to get in before we hit the end of the month I reckon that's going to work a treat you know what didn't get done? Yep, you've guessed it. I doubt it'll get next month done next month either because it's February and that's going to be as hot as bloody this month. Anyway, <laughs> here's open, eh? Well, January came and went. Finally got bloody hot like I was predicting. Um, and was still quite damp. Uh, so these blokes probably appreciated that kind of weather more than most of the rest of us. So here are the children supposedly feeding sardines to the chickens. Yeah, the chickens are quite interested as you can see. And look, and the dog too. Benny says, Benny, I'm in for it. Benny's joined in in case he Benny, can get a sardine. Go, go inside, Benny. Do you want to give Benny a little Let's bit? Let's just come out here and watch Benny, the antics. And then we'll send him in. Benny? Okay, you can't eat anymore. <laughs> the chickens are rushing. Benny's rushing. Okay, you guys can't eat anymore. I won't. Because you've touched the dog and everything. Okay. <laughs> she got excited, didn't she? She loves sardines. Look at that scabby little poodle. Okay. 